So let's assume that the Dutch central bank revalues gold from, well, I'm, I'm, I'm just using standard numbers here because the, the euro and the dollar are pretty much at parity. So let's say in, in the Netherlands, gold is 750 euros an ounce, fine. So then they revalue gold, uh, let's say to 5,000 euros an ounce, right? To expand, to, to, ba to balance their balance sheet, whatever, to make it look better. Then you have a situation where gold is going for 5,000 euros an ounce in the Netherlands, but nowhere else. So what happens then is people buy gold from anywhere else in the world and sell it in the Netherlands, and then gold flows to the Netherlands, and then the, and then people have all those euros, they convert them back into their own currencies to buy things in their own countries, and then their currencies go up, and sorry, the, their, sorry their currencies go down and the euro goes up, right? Mm -hmm. Or is yeah, I think what would have to happen uh, is like a some kind of conference where the major countries. So it, for the Netherlands, it would be the the ECB, mm -hmm. uh, and then the Fed, uh, the Bank of Japan, the Bank of England, all the major banks in the world would sit down. Maybe the BIS would be involved. Not that I like these guys, but I'm just saying what they'd have to do. They they'd have to decide on a on a rate for gold. Not yeah, they'd have to do it together because yeah, if only yeah, one of them does it, then the market will drag the rest of them to yeah, do it all anyway. Right. Yeah, and and it wouldn't uh, be done by the market. I think you mentioned that it would be done by the central banks. They, they'd say we're ready to buy. Let's say they, you mentioned the, the level thirty thousand dollars, but we don't really know where they would have to do this. But uh, in order, I guess it's at a level to cover their balance sheets, maybe. A hundred percent, maybe forty or fifty percent. In times of crises, like uh, in 1980, I think Dan Oliver mentioned that the Fed's liabilities were uh, covered over a hundred percent. So the, yeah. the for Fed a few days, yeah, for a few days. Like that. So I guess they'd sit down and say, "We want to have gold, depending on how bad the crisis is, at a hundred percent of all our liabilities, or." Uh, 40 or 50 40 has been a number that a proportion that's been used so they so let's say it's twenty thousand dollars in euros or pounds uh, so what they'd say is that uh, they're ready to uh, sell gold at uh, 21,000 and buy gold at 19,000 so they keep um, this mm -hmm. uh, band and how do right. they do that well they just print a lot of money and and i suspect uh, they they would also tell their bullion bank uh, partners to close all the paper shorts. That would help the price rise. And it's interesting because the BIS, I don't know if you saw recently, they reported that uh, their gold swaps are almost down to zero, uh, which means they're not really doing any paper trades. Okay. Uh, so then we're basically saying if one central bank you know, if, if one of them falls over and says like, we can't do this anymore, there's a run on our currency, we need to revalue gold, then the rest of them are going to have to come to a meeting and do it together if they want to maintain their monopoly on currency. Yeah. Or, uh, the market's going to force it anyway. And <clears throat> in terms of, um, first of all, I want to point out something very um, uh, big just about the fact of this discussion, right? So if one central bank is going to admit that that revaluing gold is even a possibility versus the currency uh, because of the because their balance sheet is in negative equity then that itself is an admission that the real money in the equation is gold and the currency is really just a derivative of that because what you, a central bank cannot bail itself out with its own unit of liability it's a logical loop and it doesn't work out practically like they're going to have to bail themselves out with gold which is exactly what happened in 1933, that is what Roosevelt did. He, for, but before he was able to do that, he stole it all. Um, <laughs> this this time, I don't think they can do that. Uh, he'd try. It'll cost too much for him to actually do it. Um, so you're talking about, uh, let's say, we don't know what number they would have to revalue at 100%, 50%, 40%. So thinking about that logically, okay, let's say they come to a meeting and they have a big central bank meeting somewhere. And then, um, wait, hold on. I think someone's at my door. Just pause it for a second. Yeah.
So let's assume that they pick a number at random, which is exactly what Roosevelt did when he said 35. Uh, they pick a number, let's say they want to do 40% backing gold on their balance sheets, and that they think that's enough. So that, w- that means, by implication, that the rest of the paper on their balance sheets is worth 60% of the rest of the value of the dollar, right? So all these bonds and everything that they have is going to be 60%. Uh, versus 40% gold. But the, the question is, is, is the market going to believe that? Because <laughs> if they keep selling bonds and they keep getting rid of the mortgage-backed securities, there's defaults on debt, et cetera, et cetera, and they have to keep inflating, then yeah, they won't be able to, they won't be able to maintain 60% um, paper backing versus 40% gold backing. I don't know what the market's going to do or exactly how it's going to be tested, but any, any decision they make will have to be tested by the market to see if it's believable. It just so happens that that $35 an ounce where, where Roosevelt put it was basically enough to uh, to devalue all the inflation from 1913 to 1933. It just happened to be the right number or around there. Uh, what's going to be the right number now? It depends what happens to the bond market. I mean, <laughs> if it yeah. collapses, they're going to have to go to 100%.